Hey guys, I'm heading up to one of my favorite dark sky locations in the Sierra Mountains. We're going to be photographing the Andromeda Galaxy and we're going to be doing some Milky Way photography as well. As you can see, I've got everything loaded up and we got a big night ahead of us, but we're going to have a ton of fun. So let's hit the road. Well, we're here. Looks like we're gonna have clear skies tonight, so let's unpack and get all the gear set up. The first target for tonight is the Andromeda Galaxy, which is about two and a half million light years away from us. Now to photograph Andromeda, I'm gonna be using my Canon DSLR, a 400mm f6.3 camera lens, and this equatorial mount from Orion called the Skyview Pro. Now one of the things that makes Andromeda so cool is that even though it's so far away from us, if you're under dark enough skies like we're going to be tonight, you can actually see that galaxy with your naked eye. Now whether you're doing astrophotography or you're looking through a telescope, that makes it a fantastic target. The second target for tonight is going to be the Milky Way which I'm actually going to be photographing using two different techniques. The first technique, and probably what most people are the most familiar with, is going to be with the camera and the kit lens on the tripod. Now the second technique, since I'm already going to have my equatorial mount set up and aligned, is going to be some really, really long exposure, maybe 8 or 10 minute exposures of the Milky Way at really, really low ISOs. Now these shots always amaze people, and they're some of my favorite. Huh? I'm all ready to go here. I still need to make some dinner, so I'm going to go do that, and I'll be back with you in a few hours after it gets dark. There's no go-to system or auto guider on my setup. I purchased the mount, and I later added the motor drives and the polar scope myself. Now, since there's no go-to system, how do I aim it? Well, it's easy, actually. I use a combination of this Pocket Sky Atlas and this laser sight that I actually built myself out of a green laser diode, a battery pack, and an L bracket from Home Depot. I know it sounds funny, but it actually works really well. It's a pretty simple setup, but actually really, really easy to align and balance. It only takes me about five minutes total to set it up. And once it's polar aligned, at a 400 millimeter focal length, I can actually get two and a half minute exposures with no star trails. The plan is to take two and a half hours worth of photos on Andromeda. Now, instead of just clicking away on the shutter button every two minutes, I use this programmable remote trigger called an intervalometer. I've already got it set up. Let's take a closer look. As you can see here, for Andromeda, I've programmed in to take 75 shots, which are referred to as light frames at two minutes each. This totals two and a half hours on Andromeda. Well, let's see. It's 9.40 right now, Two and a half hours will take me to 12.10 in the morning. Now when that's done, I'm gonna take the other kind of photos that I need for stacking. These include 25 dark frames, 25 bias frames, and finally, 25 flat frames. All in all, I'll be gathering around 150 different types of images tonight, which after stacking in Deep Sky Stacker, will give me one relatively noise-free image of Andromeda which then, of course, I'll finish up with Adobe Lightroom. Before I go any further, I really need to share a secret with you. You know, probably my favorite tool in my astrophotography handbag is not the mount. I mean, as great as it actually is, it's not actually even the camera. It's a good cup of coffee. You know, it's not given enough credit in astrophotography circles, but when you're up late, man, it can get really cold out here. Having a good cup of coffee makes all the difference. Did I say cup? I mean thermos. I just did several two minute test shots of Andromeda at different ISO levels. Now, I need to decide what ISO value to go with. The ISO value that you use, it really depends on the target. Something like a nebula is oftentimes going to be different than a star cluster. So each of these two minute test shots, they're referred to as light frames for stacking purposes. And if you've never seen one of these before, don't be concerned with what you're about to see. All that detail that you normally see in astrophotos is right there in the raw file. That stacking process will really allow you to pull out that detail though. And of course, I'll share that final stacked photo at the end of this video. 
Now let's take a look. Here's a two minute sub I just took at ISO 800. One at 1600. ISO 3200. And just for fun, here's one at ISO 12800. Now, I want to keep a good balance between detail, brightness, and noise levels. So for Andromeda, I think I'll stick with ISO 1600. I've already aligned and balanced them out, but now I want to double check that alignment before I commit to two and a half hours of imaging on Andromeda. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on that image of Andromeda. There it comes. And I'm going to take a look at the stars. Now what I hope is that all the stars appear round. If there's any star trails, the stars are going to appear as little lines. And that's going to be an indicator that either my alignment is off or maybe the scope's not balanced properly. So let's take a look. And as you can see, no star trails. The stars look good to me. Well, looks like we're all ready. So let's start imaging. And away we go. <laughs> now, I cannot emphasize this enough. Sitting alone in the dark, watching this camera take pictures for two and a half hours is not as much fun as it sounds. So I usually bring something else to do when I'm imaging, like I bring along my Dobsonian telescope or even these binoculars to do some visual astronomy while I wait. It's almost 11 o'clock and I've been photographing Andromeda now for about an hour and a half. The camera is locked on Andromeda as we speak and is tracking it as it moves across the night sky. I gotta tell you, it is a beautiful night up here. It is totally clear. The Milky Way is right above my head. It's really amazing. You know, I... I you know, maybe it's just my imagination, but uh, I've been hearing something walking around out in the bushes. I don't know. It's been out there all night. You know, I, I gotta tell you, when you're out here all by yourself, um, it can get a little creepy sometimes. Yep, there it goes again. I don't know, maybe it's just a raccoon or... Yeah, I don't... Whoa! Hey! Get out of here! Go on! Well, it's about 1.30 in the morning, and before I go to bed, I want to do some Milky Way photography. Now, this is something I also really, really enjoy doing, and I want to show you how easy this actually is. All you need is a DSLR, a tripod, and you got to get away from the city lights. To start, I always shoot in the raw file format. Whether it is daytime or nighttime photography, you really want to make the most out of that camera sensor and capture all of the colors and all the different wavelengths of light possible. Next, I have the camera on manual mode, as you can see with that M right there, and that allows me to change the camera settings to suit my needs. Now, to photograph the Milky Way, you should also use the lowest f-stop that you can. Something below 2.8 works great, but since the fastest lens that I own is still my 18-55 to kit lens, I have the f-stop set to 3.5. Now, to compensate for the higher f-stop, I set the ISO to 3200, which will allow me to capture more of that Milky Way detail and more of the light. Now, true, there's a trade-off. There's more noise at this ISO, but that, of course, can be cleaned up with Adobe Lightroom later. Now, let's see here. I have the white balance set to daylight, which is really more of a personal preference. I just like the way that it looks. Next, I have the lens set on manual focus. I actually focused this lens on the moon a few days ago, and I used blue painter's tape to tape down that focus ring. Now, this doesn't actually hurt the lens, but it does keep the focus in place. And as you can see right here, I have the shutter speed set to bulb. By setting the shutter speed to bulb, I'm able to precisely control the length of time that the shutter is open, which, since the sky is moving but the camera is not, will help prevent star trails in those Milky Way shots. Now, to determine the duration I should use, I employ something called the rule of 500, and this is how it works. You divide 500 by the lens focal length, and if you're using a camera with a crop sensor, you divide that by the crop factor for the camera. Since I have a Canon DSLR, 
with an APS-C crop sensor. And since I always use my 18 to 55 kit lens set to 18 millimeters, I can use a 17 second exposure for the Milky Way. Now it's very important to frame your shot and make sure that the camera's level. Now I usually include something interesting in the foreground like a rock or maybe a tree that I'll light up with a flashlight. Now I'll tell you a secret, I've actually even used my Highlander in the keychain remote and I've set off the alarm. Those bright flashing lights actually kind of give it a very interesting surreal effect. But in this case, the clouds have just come in and I think I'm just going to use that and I'll do that 17 second exposure. Now let me turn off this light and I'll take that shot. And there you go, it is that easy. Man, look at those clouds. Amazing. Now what looks like the sun coming up over on the right are actually the lights from the city of Sacramento over 70 miles away. Well, it took about 45 minutes for the clouds to clear out, but they've all cleared out now. And now I can do one of those tracked Milky Way shots that I love to do with my equatorial mount. Now, I'm going to be using the same settings as before, but in this case, I'm going to be dialing the ISO back to 200, and I'm going to do an 8-minute exposure. And for this shot, I'm actually going to be focusing on the Summer Triangle region of the Milky Way, which is right above my head. It's right up there. Now, I need to turn this light out to take the shot. Well, it's been 8 minutes. The camera's all done, so let's go ahead and take a look. Would you look at that? If you look close, you can actually see the three stars that make up the Summer Triangle. There's Altair, Deneb, and Vega. If you look close near Deneb, which is on the bottom left, you can actually just make out the North American Nebula. Fantastic. Well, I've packed up all my gear for the night. Um, it's about three o'clock in the morning. And I gotta tell you, I took a look at the camera and I'm actually really happy with the images that I got. They turned out really nice. Now, I wanna say something. A lot of people spend a lot of money on their imaging scopes. And when I started out, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, the camera lens that I use, this one right here, it's actually a 40 year old camera lens that I bought off of eBay for $20. Okay, so I know a camera lens is not an apochromatic refractor, but I think you'd be surprised what you can do with one of these. I think the images actually turn out really, really nice. The, the point I'm trying to make um, is that if you're just starting out, Use what you have access to. You know, if you don't have $4,000 to invest in astrophotography equipment, that's okay. You know, that equatorial mount that I use, the non-go-to equatorial mount, I think it came to around $600 when you consider the mount and then the motor drives and the polar scope that I added on. And I've been really happy with that. Anyway, um, it's been a long night. I'm exhausted, uh, so I'm gonna get some shut-eye. Now there are bears up here, uh, so as usual when I come up, I'm going to be sleeping in my car. I'll see you in the morning. Well, I got about two hours of sleep last night, and I'm going to be heading home soon. But before I go, I just wanted to say that this type of photography requires a pretty serious time commitment. You know, you're staying up really, really late, and you got to get away from all that light pollution from the city, which means you're driving a couple hours each way in some cases. Even so, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to kick back, enjoy this cup of coffee, and watch the sun come up. Thanks for watching.